Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a P&D driver with an LTL freight company? And have you ever wondered what everything I just said means? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at today. We've got a special RP on this one, and I think you're going to like it. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. That's right. We are looking at Chuck's YouTube channel, Trucking Through Life. And Chuck plays uh, an LTL driver with Estes Express. And we're going to try to RP this and see if we can do kind of a day in the life just like Chuck would bring us on his videos. Uh, but we're doing it in American Truck Simulator, so it should be interesting. Uh, for those of you not familiar with his channel, I'll leave the description to his or a link to his channel down in the description so you guys can take a look at it. Um, as you can see, we've got the entire yard outfitted with Estes Express. And we'll go through it just about the same way that Chuck is going to be, or that Chuck does in his videos. And I'll explain a little bit more behind what he's doing uh, on his channel, a little bit more about him as we get on the road. But let's get in the truck because we are burning daylight, figuratively. All right, let's get into it. Something really great about Chuck is he's, he's always so upbeat. Uh, really like his videos. Very entertaining. I hope I do it even somewhat justice here. But what he does is this more or less a 9 to 5 job when he's doing P&D, which is uh, pickup and delivery. I say more or less. He really does show up early in the morning. Hopefully he's off by like 5 or 6 p.m. But it's more or less a 9 to 5 in that he's not gone out on the road one, you know, a week or two or even longer. Uh, he actually gets to clock out, go home, see the family, so it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, P so P&D, pick up and delivery. Let's go over and pick up the trailer, which is what he would do. He would show up, get in his truck, and then he would go find the trailer that's assigned to him. The trailer has already been pre-packed for him and it's been loaded in reverse order that he's gonna offload it. So we're doing all the deliveries right now, and the reason why it's LTL, which is less than trailer load, is because we're not just taking an entire packed trailer uh, over to one destination. We've got our trailer loaded up, but we might have to make 10 stops to drop all of them off. So a couple pallets here, four pallets there, maybe one pallet there. Um, and yeah, it's already been preloaded. We have our destinations that we're going to go to. Uh, we just have to drive to them. And then once we're done with all of our deliveries, then we're going to start our pickups because we'll have an empty truck. We'll do our pickups. And once we're done with our pickups, we'll come back to the yard. Hopefully we can get all that done before the sun goes down. We'll see what happens. Um, and then all of that stuff will be that we bring back to the yard will be all loaded up onto other trailers and off to other destinations. Uh, Chuck is located in, he's, uh, he's based out of the Tulsa branch, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. We don't have Oklahoma yet as a DLC in American Truck Simulator, so we're gonna fake it. We're actually centered in Boise right now, and the reason why we're centered in Boise is because there's a lot of places to deliver around the Boise area and we can also head west to uh, Nampa so let's get her all loaded up and what's cool too is Chuck shows you how all this is done how to sh how to hook up the cables how to get the landing gear up especially when he's doing line haul work and he's got to hook up two doubles then uh, or two pups he runs double pups and he'll show you how you can link those together it's really cool really check out his channel this is very very much abbreviated <laughs> we're gonna try to RP it as best as possible though all right we're all loaded up into here hop back into the truck and we got to get our first delivery let me look at the first one and then I'll be back with you all right, we got our first delivery. We are going to be headed over to construction site. We're going to be dropping off some generators. 
So as we get underway, what we have here is a uh, Volvo VNL 300 day cab. Uh, you know, it's you don't need a sleeper on this one. You're doing all the all the P and D work, and you're bringing it back to the yard at the end of the day. So day cab's just fine. Keep it shorter. This thing has to be pretty maneuverable, especially to get in to all these different spots, all these different drop offs, and to move around through the city pretty quick. We do have a 53 footer on the back but the tandems are slid forward, so it's a lot more easy to maneuver. Um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, it's a Volvo D13 engine, 475 horsepower. There we go, I think we're clear. Uh, and I'm running, it's uh, this is actually what tr what truck drives uh, most of the time. Sometimes he's in a, uh, an international, but most of the time he's you'll see him in a uh, Volvo. And he's. This is a 10-speed. It's got a 10-speed. It's got a 3.55 differential, so we can, you know, relatively quickly zip around the city and stuff. We're not doing too much highway here. We're mainly supposed to be RPing, uh, keeping it more or less local. So. It's kind of fun to drive a 10-speed every now and then go through the pattern. It's a little different than a 13 and an 18 that most people end up driving mo for most most of the time that I'm driving too. So yeah, we're going to try to go through this pretty quick because as a P&D driver, I mean, you you got to you got to keep moving. You got to get through all those deliveries and then get through all your pickups. So it's we're, we're probably not going to spend any more than about 10 game minutes at each stop because we're just probably offloading two or three pallets here or there, and then we're on to the next. And he gets really creative. Uh, one thing he likes to do is he likes to kind of walk people through what his strategy is for places that he's already been to and how he's going to approach parking and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty cool. Yards, turn right. Definitely what I found... I, from what he's doing it seems like it can be if you're if you're especially in the beginning if you're not that experienced it can be a little bit stressful because you have a lot of you have time constraints you got to get in and out you don't always control what's going to happen with the person who's going to be receiving or loading your truck with uh with their load and you just got to make it work and somehow do it safely the whole time now we do not have the same type of issue here in American Truck Simulator where I'm rolling up to a building and I've, if I've never been to it, I have no idea where I'm coming, where to park. Yards, turn left. And that's something that Chuck also kind of walks you through in that strategy uh, for turn those left. that are not exactly familiar with what a P&D driver does on a daily basis. Well, let's see if we can make this. Yeah, we got it. We got it. So yeah, this 3.55 differential that we've gotten here, not great for hauling large, heavy loads, but, I mean, we've only got 44,000 pounds on this trailer to begin with that we're going to be dropping off all over the place. Um, so it's really good for being able to get up to speed fast, zip around the city, and that's the whole game. That's why I put a 3.55 differential in this. And it's plenty with the 475 horsepower engine, too. Keep right. After 50 yards, exit right ahead. See if I can do it without using the, without using the engine brake. Because I've never really seen Chuck do that. Or maybe he does, and I just don't even notice. Turn right. It would be really nice if we can get through this signal. So we can stay on time. 
So for those of you familiar with American Truck Simulator, you know that this type of work, where we're going to have one trailer load and we're going to be dropping it off at different places, uh, pickup and delivery really isn't a thing uh, that ATS has right now. So with a little bit of RP, a little bit of movie magic, we're going to make it work. Because normally you go to a place and you pick up, and you go to the next place and you deliver. And it just pretty much goes like that. Um, I am making sure... Whoa, missed that one. I am making sure that I'm getting the loads that I want to stay roughly in the area. And I'm actually using the Truckee app, the Truckee dispatch portion. Uh, so I can assign exactly where I'm going, uh, which stores I'm dropping off and picking up at, what loads that I'm taking. I know the weight that's on it. So that's kind of a cool thing. If you guys have not used the dispatch portion of Truckee, it's a third-party app that works alongside uh, American Truck Simulator. It's really great for being able to customize it. Normally, you go into the job market, and whether you're picking up freight or you're picking up cargo, you're just more or less at the mercy of whatever loads that they have at that time. And Truckee allows you to specify your starting city, ending city, where you, what store you're picking up from, what store you're dropping off at, and you can really, it's, which is perfect for a video like this where I need to make sure I'm staying within the city. Looks like we need to start getting over to the left. So we'll do that. I'm doing a little bit of floating, a little bit of double clutching. Still learning, still learning. Until I feel comfortable to just be floating all the gears, but it's all right. We'll get it done. I get myself in a lot of trouble trying to float the gears, and when you miss one, especially when you're on a hill, either going up or going down, oh, going down, it makes it really hard to stop. Because you can use those lower gears to help you, but if you miss it, you're, you're not slowing yourself down at all. And if you're going uphill and you miss it, you might be going from fourth to fifth gear, you miss it, and you might have to start off in second again, especially if you got a heavy load behind you. Long light. There we go. So we are coming up on the construction site here pretty quick so we can drop off these generators. We've only got two pallets and then we'll be off to the next one. I haven't been to this construction site yet, so we'll figure out exactly where those drop points are. How that's going to work. We may have to talk to someone to let them know where we're, where we're uh, offloading. says it should be coming up right here. There it is. That would be a construction site. You have reached your destination. Looks like it's going to be off to the left here, maybe. Let's see where this guy wants us to go. Let me go talk to him. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So what we're going to have to do, you see the parking off to the left, and we're going to have to back in there. So we're going to go around this building. Man, that volume. It's a loud engine. This D13. I think we can make it around this. We're pretty maneuverable with a day cab. And those tandems slid forward pretty good, so... Let's get those four ways on, and let's see if I can land this parking spot. Oh yeah, with those tandem slid forward, piece of cake.
make sure I'm not going to run into anything over there. Oh, that's pretty good. That's looking pretty good. Hey, just like Chuck, gets it in one try. There we go. Straighten her out. I'll go like that. That'll work. Shut her off, and we'll go talk to him. All right, and of course we got to simulate opening it. Normally, Chuck will pop this open. He'll hop in, uh, use a uh, what is it? Use a little jack that he's got on him, and uh, move everything to the back. This is their first load, so everything is already at the back. They'll come and pick it up with a forklift. Sometimes we'll load it into a dock, and they'll just take it off for us. Let me ask this guy where he wants this stuff to go. How he's going to offload it. Hey, how you doing, man? Uh, got th two pallets of generators. Where you want them? All right, I'll put them over there and just sign this. Thank you. All right. All right, they got those generators off, and we are off to the next one. As we float right through that concrete box. All right. One delivery down. Let's see, where are we going now? We are headed over to Walmart with some home accessories. That was a pretty easy drop off, gotta say. Not complaining about that. Get those four ways off. Rolling stop. I mean, what else is around anyway, right? Not that Chuck would do that. He seems to obey all the rules. And to Chuck, if you're watching this video and you are wondering why in the hell would someone play this? Well, we're not truck drivers <laughs> and we don't know what it's like to drive a truck. We just watch your videos, learn a little bit from it, and now I'm trying to recreate it here in American Truck Simulator. It's a thing. People actually watch this. Well, maybe not mine. This is a new channel. People watch other people's channels. Yeah, right turn on red. It's always been legal. Go straight. Looks like we're only about six miles from the uh, from the Walmart. So we'll be there pretty quick, and we'll already have two done off the deliveries. So I know that I am not doing this video anywhere near the justice. If the, if you guys are familiar with Chuck's channel, he's really upbeat. Really, I, you know, I'm trying to work on that too. Uh, still a little bit new to this, but I couldn't I couldn't pass it up. We take a look again. So we're sitting here waiting. Got the Volvo and the Estes. I don't think he's. Uh, I don't think he's got those beacons on top. The Estes trailer, um, obviously, had the yard all geared out in it, and you know we like to do RP here, so thought it'd be kind of fun. Hope Chuck enjoys it if he watches it. And as Chuck will let you know, unless those gates are coming down, we do not have to stop unless we've got hazmat on this. And we do not. No hazmat, just home accessories. 
I didn't know that before watching Ch uh, Chuck's channel. So I hope you guys are having a good week, about midway through right now. Um, let me know what you guys want to see on this channel. Uh, we're always trying to do a little bit of RP. It doesn't have to be that. Um, and up until now we've been kind of RPing Freebeard Transport and we take a little break to get off and see if we can emulate one of these videos by Chuck. But I'm up for all kinds of ideas. Uh, let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, positive, negative, let me know. Just keep it clean, keep it constructive, I'm trying to do a good job and deliver what you guys want to see. Um, but I could use your feedback, of course, because I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for you guys. So let me know. All right, we're rolling again. Five more miles. Seems a little bit long, but we got a lot of signals. I think this is usually the part that Chuck blacks out and he just says, oh, okay, I'll meet you when we're there. But we're not doing a full day anyway. He's usually pulling like a 20, 25 minute video from a full day's worth of work. We're only gonna be doing two or three deliveries, a couple pickups, try to keep it around the same time. Cause I mean, I, I don't wanna do a two hour video. I know you guys don't wanna see that. So try to keep it to a minimum just so you guys get a basic idea of what this P&D work is. A little bit different than what people normally think of when they're out on the road being an OTR driver over the road and you're just trucking from one part of the country to the other. You're gone a couple weeks, three weeks at a time. This is pretty great because you, you know, you put in your full day's worth, uh, full day's work. It's stressful. It's hard as Chuck will tell you. And but at the end of the day, you clock out and you go home and you see your family. I think that's pretty cool. Didn't really know that that existed other than, you know, I thought those would be deliveries for like, oh, those would go out to like USPS and FedEx and UPS. But there's, for a lot of businesses, they have contracts with companies like Estes Express. And some of the drivers are out there just to focus on those local deliveries. Get in, get out, and get as many delivered and picked up as they can. Looks like we are getting on the highway though. Missed that one. Missed it again. Third time's a charm. Still working on floating those gears. And it's a different gearbox. That's one thing you can actually tell. For those of you that have played Truck Simulator for a little bit, uh, you know that when you put a different transmission in it, especially in because this is actually from the Eaton Fuller transmission mod, and you change that differential, it acts totally different than another transmission that has a completely different uh, differential. You know, and we're, this isn't a 13 or 18, what I'm used to doing. I'm not, I'm not usually doing a 10 speed, so a little bit different, but I'm pretty sure I got the pattern down pretty solid now. Yeah, see, not that long on the highway. Not that long at all. Might have to use the Jake here. Definitely double clutch in here, because if I miss that, there's no way I'm slowing down. Hey, I might not be slowing down anyway. There we go. Wow. And that was full break, too. Need to pay attention. That's definitely not something you see Chuck doing. He's definitely on top of it. But then again, he's a real truck driver. And I just play one on YouTube. 
and that's probably safer for everyone. in, see where they want us to offload here. You have reached your destination. And sometimes Chuck will tell you, you know, based on my experience, I know I'm going into that dock, this is where they always want me to deliver. We're going to assume I've been here before, so they always want us to drop off at dock 5 when it's available. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see if we can get it one and done without a pull off, without a uh, pull up again. I don't know how he does it. Well, he's a real truck driver. He does this all the time. Occasionally, I actually make it too. Let's see if we got anything on the right. Look, looking pretty clear. Start walking her right around. Oh, might have to pull up on this one. Yep. Can't pull up too far. Gotta get her to the right. Well, well, don't get it perfect every time. But you're just a pull up away from getting it right. And this one we're gonna try to hit the dock. And we might actually... Yep, yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. Get it shut off and get these uh, home accessories unloaded. I'll be right back. Hey, man, we got some home accessories for you. We're at dock five. You guys gonna help us take it off or... All right, sounds good. And you just need to sign this. All right, thanks. All right, we got that all dropped off, and it looks like it might be raining now, which sucks. Let's hop back in. And we're off to the next one. We are off to Nampa now, which is just, uh, just west of us. Let's get that off, because that's loud. And we are actually going, this was a Walmart distribution center. We're going to be heading to an actual Walmart store, and we're going to be taking some cans. Turn right. And that weather just changes on you real fast. I think one of the craziest videos I saw was Chuck was trying to drive and there was ice and everyone was everyone was just taking the day off. I think he ended up taking the day off because trucks were uh, sliding all over the place and he just took it slow but next day he got back out on the road and I think there was still some truck and it was it's pretty crazy. And he's still got to zip around and get to as many places as he can. Obviously, his customers understood if it wasn't going to be as urgent as it normally would if the weather was fine. But and these guys drive in all kinds of conditions. It's pretty crazy. So one of the cool things about about Chuck's about Chuck's channel is he's always just he's out there he's doing it for his viewers. He's not just doing it for him. He already knows what it's like to do this day in and day out. And he's really he's always offering pointers and tips and he really is trying to inform people if they're interested not only in trucking but what he does over at Estes and I did want to make one small point though here. 
I think one of the reasons why I, what really prompted me to do this P and D delivery uh, right now is about a month ago. I want to say a little bit more than a month ago, Chuck actually announced that he was not going to be doing P and D anymore. Whether that means he's going on to line haul and sticking with Estes, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see. But he hasn't really released anything in about a month now, so I'm sure he's just getting set up for that next stage. And for those of you that do not know and haven't seen his channel, Line Hall is basically where that's when you got the double pups, the, the two 28 footers tandem, uh, front and back. And those are usually going to be longer hauls. Those aren't local deliveries. Those are going to be like driving from his his uh, distribution center in uh, Tulsa. He'll be taking it to Kansas City, to St. Louis, uh, Atlanta, wherever there's another Estes distributor. And so from the stuff that we end up picking up now and we have in the back of this trailer at the end of the day, that's going to get divided and maybe one a couple of those items are going to go in one truck that's off to uh, Kansas City with a bunch of other stuff going to Kansas City and some of the stuff we've got going to Atlanta in in the the front of the truck now get loaded on another one so it's it's pretty crazy how they move freight so quickly and uh, yeah so line hauls just definitely a portion longer hauls those are done at night usually picking up taken off around six seven eight o'clock at night and then you know those will be five six hour drives and you usually end up staying in a hotel or whatever place they have arranged for you so a little bit different than this P and D stuff but yeah see we'll we'll be over in Napa and it's only 13 miles so 17 game minutes And it's kind of refreshing to get back in one of these Volvos. It's something that when you start the game, you don't have any money. You've got to drive all these, you know, default SES trucks. And, oh, they're boring. They're bland. But, you know, in, in light of this RP, especially after driving... Especially if you're driving a whole bunch of modded trucks... It's kind of it's kind of cool to get back in the SES stuff. Right. I have. Right. Thanks, Lori. Um, I do I, I do have to say it's a lot better being turn able to right. being able to drive it in a ten speed as opposed to an automatic. Every now and then I don't mind that, but not all the time. I like shifting the gears. Do they have a green? Yeah, I think they do. Speed limit. Yeah, you know, can't turn on a right. Is that right? You can't turn on a turn right on a red in Texas or Texas. Where are we? <laughs> in Idaho? I don't know if that's true. Keep right after 50 yards. Turn right. Hmm? Rain's off. Rain's off. Turn Rain right. has stopped, so the wipers can go off. Alright, let's see if I can kind of get in here a little bit. Maybe it recognizes that I'm just turning right on red and that you shouldn't give me a ticket. Eh, worked that time. Turn right. Alright, so this is pretty much what it is. I mean, going and going and going. So at this place, at this Walmart, we are not just dropping off. So we do have the cans to drop off, but we are also going to be, we're also going to be picking something up too. And I'm hoping that they can just do it at the same dock that we go into. That would be really cool. If we're going into it, oh, you know, maybe we'll see what happens. So this time they don't have us going into a dock. So this is usually the time in the video where Chuck would say, all right, well, they don't usually have a dock available for you, so they're just going to have you pull right on up. And that forklift right there, that guy is probably going to unload us from the back. 
So maybe they'll be able to load us here too. We'll see. All right, let's get out and see what they see what they say. Hey, what's going on, man? We've got some uh, cans that we have to drop off. We've got two pallets of them. Okay. Oh, you guys are just going to use a forklift? Okay. Hey, and we also had some other stuff that we were picking up here. I think we are picking up some furniture or some home accessories. You guys know anything about that? Oh, you guys are going to load those too? Cool. All right. I'll just sit off on the side and let me know when you're done. So we'll just kind of cruise over here while they're uh, loading everything up. And we'll be back on the way in just a second. All right. Well, they got everything loaded back on the truck. Looks like we got some household appliances loaded up here. Next place we're going is an Amazon warehouse, and we're going to pick up some computers. So let's get rolling. So that's when I really like having that splitter so you can go right in between but don't have that on a 10 speed no splitters is this guy gonna fight me for it looked like he was You know, a lot of places in the games, it's like they put trees and fences in your line of sight just like they do it on purpose. I don't know if they, I don't know if it's on purpose, but your vision is obstructed so many times. I don't know if we're going to make this one. There's a cop right there. Nope, I made it. I made it. Totally legit. Totally legit. Take a look at this trailer again. And this is the exact trailer, too. It's the one that will roll up. As opposed to having the doors that open. I'm pretty sure that red's pretty accurate, too. I mean, it might be a little bit off on those rims. Oh, right through it. Smacked my head right on a signal. Pretty cool little truck, though. After 50 yards, turn left. Turn left. So what we're going to do here, and this is usually what happens, once Chuck is done with his deliveries, trailer's empty, he starts to pick, do his pickups. We just did our uh, pickup where we dropped off at Walmart. Come on, guy. So I'm going to go and do one more pickup. He would normally probably do five or six more at least. And then... No, not going to push it. Not going to push it. That was a short signal. Um, what was I saying? No. Uh, yeah, so we're going to do a, all of our pickups. And here's the thing. is He doesn't always know how many or what kinds of pickups he's going to have because it just depends on when people get their orders in uh, saying, all right, we're ready, come pick it up uh, over at the hub so that they can then relay that onto Chuck and all the other drivers. So first is first, deliveries have to get off the truck and once that's off, then we see how many we load. So I'm not gonna go through and do eight different pickups or whatever he would normally do. We're just gonna do a couple, picked up the uh, furniture or the home accessories from Walmart. Uh, we're picking up 
computers at Amazon, and then we're going to head back uh, and see if we can actually get in in a reasonable time. Oh, man. Started off in sixth instead of first. That hurts. That hurts. Not paying attention. Wow. No room for error here. I'm trying to float him. I'm just going to keep going. Chuck's much better at this. He's probably sitting there crunching. What are you doing, guy? Sorry, Chuck. I'm still learning. And, you know, it's kind of funky. I never really put these front mirrors on, like on the hood. But the mirror, they really are helpful. So I can glance over and see who's in my blind spot without having to actually turn my head, which is great for videos like this. Because something that I've noticed is I have to move my head real slow, usually when I'm looking in the mirrors. Because even though I know where I'm looking, it makes people sick if they're not ready for it. So I can just, I'm glancing over in my uh, blind spots right now. And I know it looks a little bit ridiculous, but it's completely functional. So you're not going to put those. Definitely not something that you're going to be putting on like a show truck or anything or a lot of these modded trucks, but it's completely functional and it's uh, these mirrors. I love these mirrors because it's so it's so easy to see so easy to see everything. Just nice big mirrors. You can see everything perfectly clear. Oh, we're on a hill. We'll start in third. What do we got here? It's three miles to go. Twelve game minutes. And then once we do this, we'll be headed back to the yard. Glad no one was in that turn lane. See if we can go ahead and get over. I don't know where we're going, left or right after this. Oh, looks like right. Probably don't need that blinker anymore. Probably haven't for the last minute, but I didn't notice. Too many things going on. Chuck makes it look so easy. Chuck, how do you do that? And I'm only doing like a couple deliveries, a couple pickups. This guy's doing like 20 a day. Go straight. There's Amazon. Can't be much farther now. Just gonna go right up around the block and enter from the other side. Cool. Alright, well, nothing to do but sit at a light here, so I'll be back with you in just a few minutes when we're ready to pick up. Alright, we're pulling up to Amazon right now. See if this guy knows where we're gonna park. Hey, uh, here to pick up some computers here. You know where we're parking? Okay, so we're going to go second bay when we go in on the left. Thank you. Have a good one. So this one's going to be a blind side, but it's a day cab and we have a window. So how bad could it possibly be? Famous last words, right? Let's 
Sorry if I'm whipping the whipping your vision around. I'm really just trying to see what's going on with these mirrors. It's kind of a it's kind of hard to develop that habit that I need to go slow, especially when you're backing up and you need to constantly constantly be looking out of the left side and out of the right side and just trying to do it in a slow manner. I have no idea. I might have to cut it more. There we go. So bad at blindsiding. That's not too bad, actually. I do think we're still going to hit that. So we'll just call that intentional because all we were doing was set up to park the way we wanted to, right? Uh, not quite, but I'm getting better at them. It's, it's definitely a learning process. And every time you get a different trailer with different lengths and different number of uh, axles and have them in the back and then have them pushed up to the front, everything's a little bit different each time. See if we can go slow here. Actually, I see. I'm not happy with that. I'm not happy with that. And I shouldn't be. It's fine if you're learning, but you gotta actually learn from it. And get it better. That's pretty good. Hit the dock. There we go. We can go load up these computers and I'll be right back. We got everything loaded and we are ready to head back. It's already 6.30. See, this is not realistic at all. Because I'm sure he's already back at the, at the yard by now. But with the compression in this game, it's kind of hard to RP this. Hey, thanks, guy. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you, Lori. Turn left. So, just gonna, there she goes. So yeah, a little bit different approach than just running a load from city to city when you're staying local and just, I mean, basically you're just doing what like a UPS driver would do, uh, picking up, dropping off, picking up, dropping off, all that stuff. But instead I've got a 53 foot trailer behind me. But it's really cool to have a day cab. That way I can maneuver so much easier. And it's a lot easier having these uh, tandems slid up too. Much easier to maneuver, especially in tight spots. There we go. We got 11 minutes till we're back in the yard. And then we can clock out. Got a little side mirror going on so I can see how close I am to the walls and stuff uh, right at the top of that window there. I don't know if Chuck has that. I don't know. I haven't seen that, but I don't think we usually get that view because he's usually just uh, rocking the, the hat cam.
we only turn here? No, we can still go straight. So tell me what you guys thought of this uh, this video. Did you learn anything new? Is it boring? Was it interesting? Definitely check out Chuck's channel. Again, it's going to be down in the description, link to his channel, and you can see how it's really done. I really just wanted... <laughs> I'm a big fan, and I wanted to see if I could do it in the game. But, yeah, I didn't do it anywhere near the Justice. He... He's just a really great, he's a really great presenter. Definitely gives you a lot of, a lot of cool tips and tricks. And, and uh, obviously there's a huge portion that I can't really RP. I can't open the back of the trailer. I can't, you know, simulate moving the goods in and out, which is a lot of what he shows. Um, how they get forklifts in and out of there and stuff. I obviously can't RP things like, well, very easily, just being able to, like, hook up to a trailer like he can, because we don't really have the ability in American Truck Simulator to go through, and, I mean, we just hit a button, and then it's magically attached to your trailer, or to your truck, or magically detached, and there's so many of those little, those little things that he takes you through that really help you get a better understanding for what it's like to be a truck driver and driving uh, P&D so he doesn't have to do it but he does anyway and we appreciate it I hope it I hope it did some justice or if, at the very least at the very least if you guys are wondering what it's really like what his videos are really like and not this stuff that I'm <laughs> putting you through here if I kind of interest you a little bit to check out his channel Hey, even that's great because he, he, he does a good job back at 654 I think he's usually uh, I think he's usually home by now or back in the uh, back in the yard but yeah check out Chuck's channel leave me any questions any comments um, on the video. If you liked what I'm doing, give me the thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you see all the rest of my videos, and we will see you on the next one.